Hello, welcome to the latest edition of Gunner Vlog. Uh, lots of transfer news this weekend. The main stories focus on one in, one out. The guy coming in looks to be Alexandra Lacazette. It's a tale of two Alexes, really. Lacazette, uh, seemingly very close to arriving now. The Lyon president, uh, Olas, has taken to Twitter this time, rather than his traditional way of <laughs> conveying messages to us via a press conference, to say that Lacazette is still in, uh, on holiday, not in London. Uh, the deal not quite as close to being completed as some would have you believe, but it seems as if it will go through a club record fee and Arsenal have landed themselves a new centre forward. What, it, what does it mean in terms of other deals? That's where it becomes really interesting. What does it mean in terms of other deals that Arsenal have been involved in or are rumoured to be involved in? I have to imagine that this means the end of our chances of signing Kylian Mbappe. Look, if you're a real optimist, you could tell yourself that Arsenal intends to play Mbappe deeper, maybe uh, in the kind of Alexis Sanchez role, or you might look at the fact that both Mbappe and Lacazette are strikers who have thrived in a 4-4-2. I can't see it. The latest noises out of Monaco suggest that they're increasingly confident Mbappe will stay for another year, at least sign a new contract. And I think Arsenal probably wouldn't be pushing ahead with this £50 million deal for Lacazette if they thought there was still a good chance they could get Mbappe. So I think that's what that means for that. As for Olivier Giroud, He's a player who's been linked with a move away from the club you know, pretty consistently now for a couple of weeks. Lots of teams mentioned the latest, Marseille, making a, a, a big bid. I think that Lacazette's arrival probably will push Giroud out of the club. I actually think that Lacazette's nationality plays a part in that. I remember Arsene Wenger speaking about not wanting to have Karim Benzema and Giroud in the same squad necessarily because they're competing for an international place. And I think the same is true of Lacazette and Giroud. I can't see them coexisting. I can't see Giroud getting enough football. I can't see him being comfortable being second choice to a guy trying to take his place in Didier Deschamps' France team. I can't see him moving to West Ham. Surely that's too big a step down. A Marseille or a Lyon would seem ideal for him. Um, and then Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. You know, stories in the Times today that he, is, he and his agent have turned down a, a take-it-or-leave-it offer from Arsenal. I feel like perhaps this has been in the offing for some time. There's been conflicting reports, but ultimately, you know, not signing is uh, never good news. And I think the fact that Arsenal have been fairly open uh, in the market in terms of looking at a new number eight, a new central midfielder, suggests that maybe they've been preparing for Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain's departure. I think what's interesting is his departure would leave two holes in the squad, really. One in central midfield, but another at right wing back. Obviously, we've got Hector Bella in there, but no real cover for him in that position. So that could leave us with a bit of work to do there that we weren't necessarily uh, anticipating. I think if Liverpool are offering Oxlade-Chamberlain the chance to go and play regularly in central midfield, quite how they'll do that and accommodate him, I don't know. Um, I think it makes sense. And ultimately, spending £35 million on Oxlade-Chamberlain is probably more feasible than spending £70 million on Naby Keita. That's the other big central midfielder they've been linked with. Uh, so I think there's got to be a strong chance now that he goes. So one Alex in, one, one Alex out. There is another Alex that we're waiting on, Alexis Sanchez. He plays in the Confederations Cup final against Germany this evening. I'm sure he'll be asked about his future again. I'm sure he'll be evasive, laughing off, say he doesn't know what he's going to do. We'll find out in good time. The Arsene Wenger approach, really. <laughs> um, but I, I feel increasingly like that's going to be a murky situation, which is going to dominate the next few weeks. So thank goodness, in a way, Arsenal have gone out and done some positive business. Alexandre Lacazette, you know, at the end of the day, it's a club record fee for a proven goal scorer, 37 goals last season. Um, I'm choosing to be optimistic. I'm choosing to think that Arsene Wenger... His eye for a striker is still as keen as it ever was. And if he's now decided to go back in for Lacazette at that price, he's got to have his reasons to do it. Um, yeah, we'll see. Next week, there could be a lot of news about all the Alexes. So uh, we'll find out. Stay tuned. Have a good weekend, guys. It's a beautiful day here in London. If you're in London, enjoy it wherever you are. Um, I'm about to record the Arscast Extra. So tune into that as well. Cheers. Do subscribe. Bye-bye.